And here we are, one of the most anticipated games of E3, and we just learned about it recently. It's Star Wars 1313. Is that, did I say that right? 1313 is so way easier. <laughs> uh, Peter Dominic from LucasArts and Sean McInnes joining us as well on the stage. Gentlemen, uh, welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. for having us. We're, we're very excited to, to see you and to, to try to get as much as we can out about Star Wars 1313 from you. We know it's not a lot because you guys have just revealed the game. Only have a little bit to show off here, but we'll take anything we can get. Right. Uh, so 1313 for you know the, the three people who are watching who maybe are like, what's that number all about? I don't get it. Why well, didn't say Luke Skywalker in it? What's, <laughs> what's the game about? Um, so 1313 actually refers to the number of the level that you're on within Coruscant. So uh, some people might not be aware, but Coruscant is actually made up of thousands and thousands of levels and uh, over 5,000 actually. It's not so a planet in the sense that like it's got a mantle and a crust. No. It's got just thousands of levels yeah. of grown of buildings. Over time, yeah. And okay, it's grown outward over time. It's, yes. it's one of the hubs of galactic politics. Right. And so when you go down deeper, a thousand levels down, things get pretty seedy. They do. Um, so 1313 is where the Star Wars criminal underworld really thrives. And therefore, so do bounty hunters, who are a big part of that makeup as well. Mm -hmm. So bounty hunter, that's the key word here. And that's who you're playing as. Yes. Of course, the most iconic bounty hunter in Star Wars canon is Boba Fett. Right. But you're you're no Boba Fett. I, Chris, I well, thought you were going to say Dog the Bounty Hunter, and I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> because Only that slightly was less joke. well known. I wanted to say Ig 88, but you know okay. he's just not as charismatic yeah. as Boba is. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so we're not ready to talk about who you're actually going to be playing just yet. Oh. Get, yeah, you're yeah. getting a little mic tweaked. Trying How's to that? act like he's not there. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Brilliant. I can, at least. Oh, fantastic. So, yeah, we're not quite ready to talk about exactly who you're Who you playing. are, what your situation is. Okay. Um, but, yeah, we, you know, we talk a lot about um, bounty hunters that are out there, and the, we think the reason they're so compelling is because of all the amazing gear and gadgets and weapons that they have, and getting to play with that in the game is a really important part of the gameplay and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Mm -hmm. Because anytime you see a Star Wars bounty hunter in action, there's always something new, like there's strange things poking off. There's always some panel shifting right. or some new gadget popping yeah. out. Uh, so what have, what have been some of your favorites in, in Star Wars history, gadget-wise? Like, what, what kind of inspired you guys? Um, big fan of the flamethrowers. Yep, the yeah. wrist-mounted flamethrower. Who doesn't love that? <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, there's so many. Wrist rockets, wrist darts, mm -hmm. jetpacks. I know Sean's things, a grappling yeah. hook, man. I like yeah. a good grappling hook. That's true. <laughs> Uh, now we're taking a look at one of the quick clips you guys have shown and uh, we're getting a glimpse of the action uh, from a third person perspective. About to duck behind this crate and start taking some shots at okay. some dudes we're trying to kill. Or, yeah, more, more, or even more, more sinisterly, trying to rob him. Yeah, they're actually trying to take something away that you've captured in a previous mission. And uh, you've got the capabilities to not let him grabbing the guy and throwing him over cover there. So in addition to obviously gunplay, there's there's melee mechanics as well. Right. Uh, yeah, there was it's got more kind of up close and personal kind of combat experience. There was just a little um, bit of a of a burst effect a second ago there. That's that one of your special gadgets. Yeah, it's a shockwave concussion weapon. And you know, we we when we're we're sitting there trying to think of which gadgets to kind of bring in and play with, mm -hmm. um, we often try and think of ones uh, that can play around with the core mechanics a little bit, so they let you kind of push the limits of what you can normally do in a cover-based shooter. Of course, the uh, the concussion mechanic or the concussion grenade looks a little bit like you might see a force effect come into play, right. but. There are no force effects there coming into no, play. Yeah, there's no Jedi, no force down here. Um, and you know, speaking we, of down here, just a, a note, you're going to get an idea of just how deep they're going in right. this cutscene. Um, but, Dominic, let's confirm for folks once more, the Jedi are doing their thing elsewhere. Right. They have no business on 1313. No, no, this is a much more grounded and relatable look at Star Wars. And, you know, it's the first ever time we've put um, something more mature for Star Wars out there. Mm -hmm. And the people down here are much more relatable. Uh, and, you know, they're kind of dealing, th dealing with things that you can understand a bit more easily than, you know, the demigods that we've seen from the Jedi in previous games. Nice. I feel like we should address the issue that this game looks obscenely good. <laughs> what what can you tell tell us about the technology running this game? Because I mean, wow. I think I, I think largely the uh, 
the result of the, the look that we've achieved is in part of our uh, partnership with the rest of the Lucas companies. Um, we really tried to, sorry, to, to leverage the, uh, the artistic talents that we have from uh, Industrial Light Magic, Sky Sound, Lucas Animation, and by you know, really creating this hybrid experience of getting, you know, letting the, the, the different sort of uh, company barriers sort of melt away, we just get a great synthesis of artists who are just really passionate about computer graphics and they will not let a problem go. They will just keep hammering on it until they've solved it and it's part of what led us to the, the visual results that we have. It's been an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our powers combined, it's kind <laughs> of the Captain Planet of video games. Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, the call goes out, the light goes up, and yeah, yeah it's, no, it's been a great time, um, again, getting to, to leverage all that expertise and that technology that's out there. It's, it's, it's really resulted in some amazing stuff. And certainly sparked a lot of discussion around the halls of E3. Um, uh -huh. But I'm, I'm interested in this sort of collaboration that you're talking about because, you know, they, folks at ILM, folks at LucasArts have had a lot of opportunity to work on a wide variety of Star Wars projects. What did what was the response when you guys came out and said, you know, we we don't want Jedi, we don't want to go for the Force powers, we want to make that more mature experience. Well, I think it's a, we get we have been asked that a lot, um, and this idea that it's the first time we're getting out there, it doesn't mean that it wasn't there in the first place. This has always been part of Star Wars, and you've seen this part of the world alluded to before. Um, so it's not that we've come up with it, it's kind of always been there, but this is just the first time that we wanted to kind of make a game down there and go and explore it firsthand. I guess I'm curious about, you know, you're, you're sort of spitballing the idea around the water cooler, like, we, yeah. we, why don't we just, like, lean into this, really? It's always there, and yeah. then imag I'm imagining all the designers are like, well, yeah, I'd really like to see, you know, some more bounty hunter stuff go on. Well, yeah. let's get down in Coruscant, man. Forget these, you know, <laughs> giant fungus planets. Let's, let's go deep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Seems like a... An interesting way, and I think a lot of the response people are having is because you are mining this uh, very popular, very widely exposed universe for new creative material that hasn't been popularized before. I think right. that's. I think it's been one of the more exciting parts for both the the design and the art team is that you you're operating within again the Star Wars universe that is well established and familiar to folks, but this. Uh, this new space, uh, uh, this level 1313, does open up that opportunity to, to show folks uh, part of the Star Wars universe that's going to feel both familiar but different at the same time. I mean, it, it, again, it, it just really opens up a lot of opportunity for the, the game team to really kind of uh, dig in and, and get the, the gameplay experience that we want and, and flesh it out in this world. Uh, we've got a question coming over Twitter from Chris O'Toole, wondering if you can place it in the Star Wars timeline. If that's something you're you're talking you're you're talking yeah. about yet? Yeah. So the game takes place in between the two trilogies. Okay. Yeah. In between episodes three and four. Yeah. You got it. All right. There's too many questions here that I definitely can't ask. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look. <laughs> let's take a look again. Here we're seeing the the combat and uh, blasters. Of course, we talked about sort of bounty hunter gadgets, but. Bounty hunters love guns also, and so we see a little hand blaster here. Is it safe to say the arsenal is going to be expanding? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's really important that, um, you know, with this more grittier theme, we want to kind of bring back this really ballistic feel to the weapons as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of feel that threat and pressure and danger from the just the normal weapons in the game. And those blasters, you're not waving them away with a, a flick of the wrist no. and the lightsaber. Uh, you gotta, you got to take cover. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the mechanics of cover-based shooting really lend to making you feel more vulnerable and more under fire and under pressure. Um, so they kind of go hand in hand as well. They work really well together. Mm -hmm. deep breath. Oh, here's some curiosity you probably can't answer. Co-op or multiplayer? Uh, currently, this is a single-player game. Single-player yes. game. All right. Uh, now, 1313, we sort of saw, I guess, in, in this cutscene, we see them diving down. But there's like a thousand more levels below right. 1313 as well. So, I, is it safe to say that we're not just going to be staying on that one level of Coruscant? Um, it's too early to say where the other locations might be. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, given given the two two of the three little clips we've been looping here mm -hmm. involve uh, ships plummeting yeah. through that tunnel. Yeah. Uh, I think it's safe to say your adventure is going to take some unexpected turns. Right. Absolutely. So have you guys been uh, getting, are you on the show floor here at all? Have you been getting people just coming up to you and bombarding you with things that you have to bottle inside and 
and not release. We uh, we've been up in our uh, uh, the booth giving a lot of presentations and stuff, but uh, yeah, the questions have been coming fast and furious, and the the response has been really positive, and we're just happy that you know that the the fans are excited and that everyone's got had such a great response to what we've uh, what we've shown so far in the conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about you, Sean? Your interest peaked. Very much so, yeah. Definitely looking forward to checking this one out. And um, I'm probably going to have to sneak into one of those demos yeah, before the show closes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll oh, get you. Yeah. Well, you're running pretty low on time, buddy. We only got about uh, <laughs> <laughs> three more hours here of this live show. Uh, let's see. 13.13. Uh, so Schweppel in the chat is wondering about RPG elements. Um, you know, obviously you can't get into too many mechanical specifics, but... Uh, Part, a core part of a lot of Star Wars games, even when you have Jedi who've been training for years and years and years, is yeah. about growing more powerful right. along the course of your journey. Right. So it's not so much uh, an RPG focus. It's more um, this, this train of extra gadgets that you will get and extra weapons that will change the way the game plays, but it's all tied into the progression of the story. So you have to wait and uh, hear more about that later. Sure, but <laughs> and, and given the, the sheer variety of gadgets you can, you can probably come up with, are we, we think it's safe to say that there's different ways you can handle certain situations in different different combat scenarios? Absolutely, yeah. Um, the, you know, we love the, the, the linear kind of roller coaster action blockbuster game, um, but what we're trying to do by bringing in this bounty hunter fantasy of being more predatory uh, in these combat encounters and giving you more tools at your disposal, that it will actually help you um, express yourself in the combat and play it in different ways. Uh, and that's really what we're kind of shooting for in the moment to moment gameplay as well. Very neat. Uh, folks are curious about the, the sort of length of the single player game. Are you kidding me, people? You really think I'm going to get any kind of <laughs> length information out of these dudes right now? <laughs> I mean, they're showing you just a, just a snippet, but uh, sort of tied in with that question is the idea of replayability and of sort of being able to choose a path because so much of Star Wars canon is light or dark, is, right. is a world that's complex, and you got... I imagine you're exploring that and sort of really taking that into account when the when it comes to player choice. Um, I, well, I think you know those themes are definitely a big part of it, um, but it's all very much still on this well-crafted uh, cinematic story that we've got. Um, so that kind of branching storyline is not what we're going to be focusing on in this game. All right, uh, Sean, you would not believe how much people want to know about this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm sure. I'm curious about the overall tone of the game and specifically how it relates to the other visual Star Wars um, products, like the movies and things like that. Like, tonally, is it going to be a bit more, you know, dark, mature than what we've seen in the past? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it... Um it's safe to say, you know, it feels a bit more like the original trilogy, I guess. You know, we, we reference the, the cantina in Mos Eisley as something that's already in the movie canon, you know, yeah. that is a good reference point for what this will feel like. Um, and this, the idea of making a mature Star Wars product, you know, we've been saying this a lot as well, it's nothing, uh, nothing gratuitous. It's not about gore or blood or guts or anything like that. It really is the type of characters and the themes and the feel of this place. Yeah, I was going to say, it reminded me of the cantina scene, which is something that happens fairly early on into the very first yeah. movie. You get to explore that whole den of scum and villainy, you know? Um, so this is something that Star Wars has had in the past, yeah. and you know it's a part of the universe, right. but as you know, the movies went on, you kind of saw other parts of the world. Absolutely. But that's obviously something that grabbed your guys' eye. Yeah, absolutely. It's just ripe with opportunity, basically, for a game like this. All right. Well, I'd love to keep trying to press you for information about drivable vehicles or playable characters or droids or alien races that are going to appear in a game or any number of things that people really want to know about. But I understand you guys are just showing it off first. You're just giving yeah. us the littlest tease, but we certainly appreciate it. You've given us something to be excited about That's here right. at E3. And, uh, you know, I'm not even going to bother asking you for a release date. I'm just going to say <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show well, for and talking you. about the game. Yeah, much appreciated, Cheers. guys. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you. All right, folks, uh, taking a quick look at Spec Ops The Line before we're back here for a demo of Tomb Raider.